Morning folks, this is day three of the Pilgrim's Way. And last night we stayed in Alton, a market town. Now actually it's a lot bigger than I expected it to be. Uh, we stayed at the cream building behind me which is called the Crown Hotel. A reasonable price is £49 for this area of uh, south of England, although it came at a price. It is above a pub. My room was directly above the door. So the pub was open to about 3.30 a.m., at which point people decided to run around the hotel shouting, obviously no respect to any guests. So basically I didn't get any sleep till about 4 a.m. So if you want to stay at the Crown Hotel, I suggest one thing, bring ear defenders. But nevertheless, we've got out of there. We are on day three. Today we're walking to Pottenham, uh, which is an eco lodge that we're gonna stay in tonight. Now on the way, we're gonna head to uh, a few places, but the biggest place is Farnham, and uh, Farnham Castle, which is the end of the St. Swithin's Way and where the North Downs Way and the Pilgrim's Way continues. So that's where we're heading today. So we've got about 18 miles, one thing to do, and let's get going. This is the train station of Alton. Now it does have a normal line that leads towards, I think, London. It also has uh, the Watercrest line, where we stayed near the campsite. So this is the Alton train station. We're not actually going that way. We are heading along, I believe it's called Normandy Street. And we're gonna head out of Alton. And I think it's called the Pre Law College. Uh, which we're heading up to next. I do believe this is possibly either a telephone exchange or some sort of government type building. The interesting sign says ER 1936. Well, Elizabeth II wasn't in rain in 1936. She didn't come to rain until 1953. This is Alton FC Lady Scene. I think Alton are the ones in white by looking at the colours by over that side. Yellows and blues, same sort of colours as my old regiment. Hopefully not my old regiment. I've been watching it about three minutes. In that time, the yellows pulled two balls out the back of their net. Oh, ball in the other net now. That's three goals in five minutes. There's no defenders either side, I don't think. Everybody wants to be a striker. On our right is Tree Law College. In 1907, Sir William Purdy, Tree Law, who was the Lord Mayor of the City of London, set up a cripples fund as an appeal as mayor. And now, this year, whilst I have been Lord Mayor of London, it has been possible for me to carry out what has long been in my heart, the establishment of a home and college where crippled children can be received, treated for their disease, educated and taught a practical method of getting their living in the future. His aim was to build a hospital and school outside of London for children with non-pulmonary tuberculosis. Her Majesty Queen Alexandra came to Mansion House, the official residence of the Mayor of London, to open the Queen's Faint in aid of the Cripples Fund. In 1908, the boarding school and hospital were opened in Alton. The college moved sites to here, which is in Hollybourne, in 1965. Today, Tree Law is the UK's leading centre for severely physically disabled children and young people. Very picturesque church. And the wedding is about to take place. The organist is having a few problems with the courts. A moment ago, it did sign the combination of the wedding march, which is the one that's playing now. And then they went into, oh, I do like to be beside the seaside. An interesting combination of two tunes. So I presume this is part of the old stream, the sacred stream, although it looks more like a pond. But I'm sure the stream comes away from here. Now here we have a couple of bridesmaids. Morning. Holyborn derives from the old English word meaning sacred stream. 
Next to the church is a pleasant pond and the sacred stream leads away from the pond. As we leave Holyrood, we walk along this track. Now there's a cut-in in between the trees here. Now this field in front of us used to be an old Roman settlement. Roman posting station, Manaso of Vidoma. As we walk through here, this is where the two Roman roads crossed. So one being the St. Swithin's Way, the other being this track here. Corner here where the woodlands are is Cuckoo Corner. Anyway, this will continue on the other Roman road, which is the St. Swithin's Way. Now along the way, we've got a few other places we're aiming to get to today, which include Bonham's Farm, we'll be passing there in a moment, then heading up to Upper Foyle. From there, we head to Jenkins Place and Pax Hill, then passing Bentley, and then we head towards Farnham via this castle and its stables. Now either buzzards or kites. I'm not sure how it determine the difference. I think kites are slightly bigger than buzzards, so I'm guessing these might be kites. On our right we have Bonham's house. It's a 17th century farmhouse. A hare there, quite a large hare at that. Just by the tree. Can't smell me because I'm downwind. But he's going to notice me soon. Right now, he's gone. So we're just heading into Upper Froyle, a little hamlet location, a few houses. From about 1900, Sir Hubert Miller would spend some of his time in a villa he had in Venice. Sir Hubert Miller was also the Lord of the Manor for Froyle. Every time he returned from Italy, he would bring with him small statues of saints. These were placed in the niches and under the eaves of the houses and cottages that belonged to the estate in Upper Froyle, and they still stand there today, even though the estate has long since been split up. And now the village is known as the Village of the Saints. So dotted around the village is 19 saints, although only 18 are able to be seen under the eaves and the exterior of houses. There is one that is inside, and that's Joan of Arc. St. Hubert standing outside the entrance of the old post office cottage. There's also St. Anthony, St. Christopher, St. Joseph. Ronda House, a 14th century timber frame building, has a niche of a bedroom window with a statue of St. Peter holding the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Other statues include St. Catherine with her wheel, the Virgin Mary, and the Holy Shepherd. Royal Park, Hampshire. Royal Park is a Jacobean Grade II listed manor house. It was built in 1620. Originally, it was where the last Lord of the Manor and benefactor of St. Mary's Church, Sir Hubert Miller, resided. Well, I did think that was signed for Elephant's Crossing. Royalsark.com. We'll have to see if there's an ark being built around here. And there's a giraffe. Looking to be an interesting place, this, especially with the brute uh, graves who were made like that from the body snatching back in the 1800s, where uh, people would dig up the graves and use their bodies for medical research and other things. Just see near the pylon. It's jumping up. There's two of them. I just startled them as I just walked past this field. The monk gaps are hidden in the undergrowth now. Evidence of Roman occupation has been found by these farm buildings in the mid 20th century. Walls and pottery, together with the skeleton of a young girl. Coldry first appears in documents in 1253 as the Manor of Colworth. It was a sub-manor belonging to the Bishop of Winchester and let to tenants. The manor was a farm providing grain for the Abbey of Waverley near Farnham. In the 14th century, it was owned by the Colworth family. 
until the reign of Henry VIII. In the early 1800s, the house was bought by Robert Newton Lee, who became a deputy lieutenant of Hampshire and Justice of the Peace. After Robert Lee's death, his widow, Mrs. Harriet Lee, farmed Coldry until her death in 1863. It was then purchased by the Duncan family and used for farming and hop growing, and has continued to be a state that grows hops. So we've just crossed the wheat fields and we've reached this track. In front of us is Baden Cottage. And we're going to head up this way, up the track. It is private property, but fortunately St. Swithin's Way heads through the edge. And we're heading up to Pax Hill now. We've now reached Pax Hill. In front is not now a nursing home. But this is the family home of Robert Baden Powell founder of the Scout Movement. His wife, Alave, became the first chief guide for Britain. They lived here for over 20 years, from 1918 to 1938. Originally called Black Acre, bought as a gift from Olave's Baden Powell's father. They renamed it Pax Hill, or Peace Hill, and extended the building with a further two wings. Scouts and guides used to camp either side of the drive. In 1939, the Baden Powells moved to Kenya where Robert died in 1941. The following year, during World War II, the house was occupied by Canadian military troops, where Olave Baden Powell was awarded a grace and favour apartment at Hampton Court Palace. After the war, Olave gave Pax Hill to the Guild Guides Association, and then in 1988, the house was sold, where it is now a care and nursing home. Let's see how close we can get. He's looking at me. She's looking at me. I nearly ran off. Of all the whole field, and you're standing in the mud. Well, them flies around you. Not doing you any good. Anyway, moustache, doing the pilgrim's way. So this is Jenkin Place, and the house behind, hidden behind these big doors, is where Howard Stevenson once lived, the White Star Line. White Star Line is famously known for one of its ships, the Titanic. He was the Titanic's first ever passenger as the ship sailed from its shipyard of Belfast to Southampton before its fatal journey. It was here the night he was told that the Titanic had sunk by hitting an iceberg. Now looking down here, it's quite a nice ornate bridge. And uh, if you cross that bridge, there is a tennis court and a swimming pool. So this side of the road is his land as well. Well, was his land. A vinery. Must be getting close to Kent. There's plenty of those in Kent. This is St. Mary's of Bentley. This is the headstone for Anne Edgar Trimmer. I've married to George Duncan. couple of house houses, although by the looks of it they've been redeveloped into a residential now. This is Overdean's Court. Very interesting dragons on their entranceway. And the house looks lovely. Nice plants outside as well. A good piece of land. The only just bad thing is they could do with uh, 
paint in the front gates. Well, this is the opposite side to Overdean's Court. <coughs> the reason why they're all going there is there's hundreds of sheep in this tiny little field. And it looks like they're all molten in there, thank you. And it stinks quite a lot as well. Not really RSPCA, and there's one here but got some attached to his leg. He's dragging something with him. He's pulling some sort of box. He's got a yellow cord attached to his back leg and some sort of box he's dragging along. Humans have human rights. Surely sheep have sheep rights. There's no grass for him to chew either. There was a moaning. A moaning. I talk to the sheep quite regularly. And they respond. Like this one in front. Your dog could be shot if found amongst sheep. Well, it won't be found amongst them sheep. There's no space for him to get in there. So as you can see, we're just heading into the edges of Farnham. And it's also raining a bit at the moment. Trying to debate if I should put my waterproof jacket on or not. Probably the best idea if I did. Nice uh, row of cottages on our left hand side. And at the moment, I think we're going to turn right and head into Farnham itself. So as we continue walking along the St. Swithin's Way, which is not far now, I think we'll probably go back just over half a mile to the end of St. Swithin's Way. Then we'll pick up onto the North Downs Way stroke Pilgrim's Way. We're going to go past the university in a moment, which I believe is after this field. And then after the university, we should head into the town. Uh, I think it's called Castle Street is where we're heading to. So we're walking up the Bishop Steps now. So in front we have the castle. There's some of the buildings to the castle. Farnham Castle, a fortified residence built in 1138 for Henry de Blois, Bishop of Winchester, who was the grandson of William the Conqueror. The original castle was demolished in 1155, joined the War of Anarchy by Henry II and then rebuilt in the 12th, and 13th and 15th centuries. Cardinal Henry Beaufort once lived here. He controlled the trial of Joan of Arc in 1431. The castle is in five acres of land and overlooking the town of Farnham. Over the years, more buildings have been built on the site and has made the site one of the most significant historical buildings in the south of England. Farnham is of historical interest, believed to have dated back as far as the Stone Age, with burial chambers found around the town. Several burial chambers have also been identified dating back to the Bronze Age, with a Bronze Age hoard being found at Farnham Park. Then in the Iron Age, a hill fort named Caesar's Camp was located to the north, with Farnham being the forefront of historical significance through the continuation of periods of British history to the present date. Now the houses on my left are elm houses built in 1619. Well, I can't actually see a endpoint for St. Swithin's Way. As I mentioned, uh, no idea where the end of the St. Swithin's Way is, but um, we will head down to where the North Downs Way starts, which I do believe is down on a main road around the corner from here. So let's head down to the North Downs Way. Let's pick up the rest of the Pilgrim's Way. So this is the River Way, and we'll be following 
park here alongside this for a little while as we follow the North Downs way. So this is the North Downs way. So as it mentions, Dover is 153 miles that way. Now this looks like there's a butterfly, a man, and probably a walker with the National Path sign, the, the acorn. So North Downs Way, an inspirational 153 mile journey from Farnham to Dover through a beautiful landscape rich in heritage. Anyway, we're not going to get far just chatting here, so we best keep going. We've just arrived at the Church of St. Laurent in the parish of Seal. The church was established in the 12th century as an outpost of Waverley Abbey. The bell tower houses a peal of six bells, the oldest and largest cast in the 16th century. This chalky hilly ridge known as the Hogsback and has been noted in Jane Austen's novels. As we approach this S-Bend, it's actually known as Beggar's Corner. Just notice these hop crops on our left hand side. So we're just arriving in Pottenham and it's been a long walk today so with the last few miles being on the road so it's glad to uh, get in and we'll get to the, the eco barn. A good intent and I can vouch it serves a good point. This is St John the Baptist Church. The first part was built in 1100 and the further four sections were built over a course of 300 years. The last section was a spire although in the 18th century a fire destroyed the spire. Puttenham Priory is a large house situated behind the church. Although we are unable to see it from the church, the original house dated in 1266 when it was a priory. It was extended in 1730 by Thomas Parker, who added the Palladium front. The house is now the home of Queen Drummer, Roger Taylor. And here's home for tonight, the Eco Barn. That's day three of the Pilgrim's Way complete. Next episode, we go from Puttenham to Tanner's Hatch which is near Dorking. If you'd like to join me on that, that'd be great. So until then, stay safe, look out yourselves, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye, hikers. <laughs> <laughs>